Hello world, I'm LJ and this is LJ Go Sweden. It's nearly a year that I am living in Sweden and so I was curious to finally talk about the list of all my job applications that I had sent last year in November and in December. I'm doing this video to not only give myself a recap about the learnings that I made while doing that, but also to give it to you. Especially how I figured out what I was applying to and which companies and so on. I have applied to 224 jobs in the span of 6-7 weeks, which is definitely, in my opinion, a lot of jobs. So to give you an overview, if you're new on this channel, I have studied physics in Germany. In my master I had focused on astronomy because my dream was always to do something with astronomy because you know I watched a lot of documentaries and I was just like oh that's awesome I want to do that I want to learn that and then during my master's degree I unfortunately realized or let's say fortunately I realized that working is not as good and as crazy as all those NASA renders of galaxies and stuff like this looks like. Most of the time you are just pushing numbers around or you're creating simulations and that then gives you numbers that you can then use to get results but it is a lot of theory and even if you're observing the night sky yes you do that but most of the time it is a computer doing most work and then you take images and you extract numbers from them. Of course when you're working with more experimental physics it always will be numbers that you push around to make research so that should be obvious but when I started doing that I was not thinking about it you know I was I was 18 I was like oh yeah let's study it's awesome it's gonna be cool well in the end then you realize that this is not really that that gives you joy and you should always have joy while you are working. So yeah I moved to Sweden and my goal was basically to apply to stuff that I could see myself in that I have at least somewhat of an advantage or not a disadvantage with my studies in physics. And when you think about physics you have a huge span of stuff. You have done mechanics, you have done electronics, you have done particles, astronomy. But you have most of the time done theory. You always are like on the... On the surface level and when you do your thesis then you do do a deep dive in a certain subject so that was very different when you enter the workspace where you have a lot of practical stuff you have a lot of engineering like jobs or like scientist jobs that are really rare and then difficult to get i ended up applying to those 224 jobs and i ended up in earnshots week right here where i'm living right now at san mina a company that does medical equipment for other companies and also industrial equipment and I am a test engineer. So basically developing tests like on the hardware side but also on the software side for other customers that bring us their may it be a PCBA or maybe also already a finished product. Okay but I don't want to talk too much about this. The video is more about my yeah, learnings that I made from doing this. So first of all, I really, really recommend everyone who is applying to stuff to just write down every information that you think might be useful in the future. So like the job position, the location, the company, the status of that application. Is it rejected? Is it still open? Then like maybe some details. Which stage are you in if you have received a stage? Like had you already won interview? Did they take you like in the second level but you still haven't done anything? And then of course always also a URL where you get to this job. Because when I applied to 224 jobs, I can tell you if I got an email that said like, oh yeah, we want to have you for an interview. I most of the time had no idea what was that job about because you had so much in your head. You have so many applications. So of course you have to basically reread the stuff that you have applied for and then make your in-depth focus about this company about the job and things like these but now let's talk about the elephant basically in the room and that is of course how much percentage of all the job applications were somewhat successful 
or that are still open. Because of course, when I signed my job contract right now, there were still a lot of jobs that I have not heard anything. Others after I signed my contract, of course, also invited me to do some interview or some testing. So out of all my job applications, I received three job opportunities out of 224. So based on this, one can say around about 1% of all my job applications were successful to the point that I have a contract offer. And yeah, so that means you need, well, 100 job applications or a bit less to get at least one positive outcome, which is already crazy in my opinion. Because when I started applying to jobs, I actually started before November already while I was still writing on my master's thesis, but I don't, haven't even counted that in. I was applying to like two, three jobs during a week and I felt like, that's special, you know, like I have done something and I'm like, oh yeah, I'm so nervous if they respond. And when I had realized that no, all of them rejected, I told myself that is not the way to do stuff like this. You need to basically send so many applications. You need to work your ass off just to have one positive outcome. The good thing with all of this is while you send out applications, you make progress yourself. So the first applications will be the worst, but in the end, you will improve yourself. You will improve your CV or your resume. You will improve your cover letter because the way I worked this, I had like one structure of my cover letter that was always similar to each other. And it was just based on the job, based on the company, adjusted to fit their needs. And of course, the same with my CV. I was highlighting other traits, other things, more based on the job position that I was aiming for. And the more you do this, the more you realize like, okay, maybe the wording was bad. Maybe I should do this. I try this out. Of course, you never get really feedback if your cover letter is good or bad based on the company that you apply to. But one thing that I also told myself is if I get a rejection mail, I always ask them why did I got rejected? And the, the biggest reason for most of them was actually that I'm not fluent in Swedish, which makes sense because I am living in this country. I, I was aiming also to like northern, reg northern regions of Sweden, which are definitely more Swedish speaking and not so comfortable with English. So if you are living in a different country, maybe you should keep that in mind. And then the second one, of course, was always that I am not qualified enough that I not have it, that I don't have enough work experience because I have applied to a lot of engineering jobs and of course I have no engineering degree I have a physics degree like I already said it's a lot of theory and well theory is no work experience so my only work experience that I basically had regarding like scientific context was during my university internal like experiments where you write like log books and you have to you know what I mean, like basically you're doing some physics experiment and you then write, of course, also the results, make some, you know what I mean. So these were basically the reasons why I got rejected. Of course, unfortunately, also a lot of times I have not received any yeah, reason on why I was rejected. Well, I have applied to a lot of big companies, so I don't really blame them if they would respond any every single person that would be really impressive to be honest but now i already said many times that i applied to different jobs at bigger companies well let's take a bit of a deeper dive into what i have applied therefore i'm gonna show you this diagram right here so what you can see is first of all um, at the first row basically the number of job applications that i have done and i already said 224 then I have selected a few keywords in the job titles that I have applied to. Some of them overlap, others of course not. And as you can see that the biggest pool of jobs that I applied to was in the engineering pool. So may it be a production engineer, a process engineer or a project engineer and development engineer, system engineer. So you find so many terms floating around and I can tell you, based on like all those words that are in front of the engineer, usually I was not really getting too much context. I always had to read through what is the job really about to get a clearer understanding if this is fitting me or not. 
but most of the time I was aiming for that, even though they never really mentioned anything about physics. Maybe you need some kind of applied physics, which is still different to the type of physics that I have studied, but I never really cared about like their requirements of like how many years you need. Of course, I don't aim for managing positions. That's, that would be kind of like really wasted time. But if you aim for a job where you think like you could write or like you could reason yourself why you are the perfect person for that, even if you don't have the amount of work years or whatsoever, then I really just applied to that. And then the next big term that I was aiming for was lab. So with that, I mean, of course, like also like laboratory technicians, lab engineers, like I already said, or other stuff that is going on with people in a lab. Because lab work was a big part of my studies and I knew that I am capable of doing that. I learned the right way of doing laboratory things in my physics degree. So it was obviously for me to aim for that in jobs. Well, it didn't work out in the end, but that was the second biggest thing. Then we have tech. And with tech, I basically mean all the jobs that have a technician thing. Like you need some technological background. Can I give you some example? We have an analysis technician. We have a lab technician, technical service engineer. Then the next thing is test. This was something that I have realized while I was applying to a lot of jobs because I liked the idea of being something like a test engineer or something like this. To test out things that are real world applications to see if they are working, to do some development. So that was already the beginning, like where I ended up right now. I liked the idea of testing out things. Yeah, and then we go further down to like analysts. So, you know, like also data, they basically merge together as a data analyst, things like these. And as you can see, the further down we go, the less it gets. And especially in the lower ends, you can see jobs that were really focused about like scientific stuff, research stuff, physics stuff. They were basically so rarely on the job market while, while I was applying to them. You can see that in this diagram right now, really clear. It is not like that I was not trying to apply for these jobs. That it was just that the amount of these jobs was so low that I couldn't afford just applying to scientific jobs. And as you can already see, astronomy. There was no single job that had like something with astronomy in the job in the job title because most of the time if you like aim for working at NASA or other space agencies you still need an engineering degree and you will have an engineering job there where you don't need physics you need the work experience the real world scenario and not just the theory of course they need scientists at NASA and things like this but the amount of scientists compared to the amount of engineers you need to build a satellite to build a rocket you know you don't need 500 astronomers you need 500 engineers and maybe like five astronomers but not the other way around so that was something that I also realized pretty fast that this is not going to work even though of course it would have fitted me the most but to be the cherry top especially after coming out of universities I think you would have or you probably need to be like some type of crazy Nobel Prize winning astronomer. I really think so. Like it's 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 possible, but it's really really rarely and you need a lot of luck and maybe also context that make this thing a possibility. Then just another interesting fact that I haven't talked about yet is how many good things happened even though I got so many rejection things and how many applications maybe did I not receive any response. So first of all, I got 180 out of 224 rejections during my whole year now. There's actually one crazy thing. The latest rejection that I got was on May 27th. So over five months after I have applied to my latest job, I still received a rejection mail. So this also shows basically don't hope for one single job because you could wait forever and you could lose so much valuable time. Out of that 224 um, job applications, I had 37 without any response. Of course, you cannot blame 
the company for not responding. There might probably be companies where you could blame them, but basically nearly all of them send you like an email with, yeah, we have received your application. We are going through that. If you don't hear back from us in the next 30 or 60 days, count this as a rejection. And so I don't blame companies for not responding, but this can also be, of course, the case, unfortunately. I had also 10 tests already from jobs that I applied to, and all of these test thingies unfortunately resulted in a rejection. Additionally to the test thingies, I also had four telephone interviews. I think like one or two of them randomly called me without like telling me in advance when there is like a good time, which was totally fine. I remember one of them, I was just walking to the grocery store and it was already pitch black outside. I think it was like at 4 or 5 p.m. And I got this call from the, I think it was SCA, like the Swedish paper manufacturer. I actually have to say that I like telephone interviews because I cannot get nervous. When you have like a job interview on the telephone, most of the time you cannot prepare for it. And the less prepared you are for a telephone interview, the more, of course, you have to gamble. I'm serious with you. I remember when I was on the telephone, I was like, what job was this about? And then I was like, mm, okay, let's figure out how we're going to make it which is definitely a negative thing. And in my case, actually, most of the telephone interviews, they wanted to check my Swedish levels, which was then, of course, always the reasoning why I got rejected. But yeah, so enough said about these. Now at the end of this video, just two small little diagrams that I want to show you that I found personally interesting. They have nothing to do like with learning where I applied to, but I just think it's kind of fun to see. So first of all, I have the top list of companies that I have sent the most applications to. And as you can already see, 50% of the applications went to other companies. So I have sent over 100 job applications to really 100 different companies in Sweden. But at the same time, I have applied to a lot of jobs that are focused like on the automotive direction, for example, like Scania building trucks, Tesla building cars, Volvo cars and also trucks and then also of course LKAB which is like the biggest mining thing in the north of Sweden and Northwald well <laughs> Northwald has definitely a crazy story if you know Northwald you know that they are pretty close to going bankrupt and I am really really lucky that I have back in time decided against them because I had a work contract for Northwald they offered me way more money that I'm earning right now, but I would have ended up either already fired now or definitely in stress. And then other things, so we have IES, which is the International English Speaking School in Sweden. So of course I also tried that because a physics teacher in an English speaking school, I could think about this, also astronomy. So I think that was an option for me. And then as you can see, also a lot of other things, AFRI, which is also more like an engineering thing, some kind of industrial, I don't really remember anymore, Westinghouse, SCA, the paper factory. They have done some laboratory areas, some research things where I was aiming for. Then Vattenfall, of course, like energy, Axel Nobel, and then a lot of other things. And then the latest diagram of this video is the number of cities with my most applications. And that is pretty interesting in Sweden because... Well, the big cities, Göteborg and Stockholm, of course, very far on top. And then we have Sundsvall there. Sundsvall is so high up, not only because they have like the SCR paper factory thing and a lot of other stuff there. Sundsvall was also the place where I started my Sweden adventure. And of course, when I lived in the town, I was aiming to maybe already find a job in the town without moving somewhere else, which is why that is so far up. And then we have Uppsala, also like very well known, after, like they have a huge university there. Sheleftio again, due to Northwold, for example. Södertalje, Kiruna, Westeros, Solna, and so on. Kiruna again for the mining thing, LKAB, also Jelivare. Yeah, and then we have other towns, just randomly in Sweden, and also 33% with basically towns that were basically then individual locations that I have not yeah, placed a lot of applications to. For example, Earnshots Week, where I ended up right now. So what can I say out of this job application list? To sum it up, 
apply, apply, apply and don't care if you get a rejection because it's not worth, you know, most of the time they have some kind of AI or computer algorithm that scans your resume, your cover letter for certain keywords before it even reaches a human resource person that is really reading through your cover letter. So I would really not care too much if you get a rejection and at the same time also you, you learn from your mistakes. Even though if you don't get too much of a feedback from the companies, you learn what you are preferring. Like I already said, because of all these application things, I kind of figured out in what type of work area I am more interested than in others. You know, you have this feeling of, do I trust my own skills? Do I have like enough self-confidence to do something like electronics? Or do I have enough self-confidence to do something like research or things like these? And while you apply for things, you get this kind of feeling like what if they say yes do i think i can do it and yeah as you can see i was fully going for engineering direction basically focused in like laboratory stuff or testing stuff it took me two and a half months till i started working but i think also you have to keep in mind it was during the christmas time i'm very happy that it worked out the way it did and you can also do it when you're currently in this situation of not having a job and you're like struggling to find something, it will only get easier. First of all, when you have a job and you're looking for something else, you usually never have to rush because you have a job, you get paid. So it is not like this constant pressure. You can really pick out the ones that you think you're, in, you're interested in. And also you have work experience. So this is really the most valuable things. The level of education that you have is maybe important in the amount of money that you get in the beginning, but it is definitely not important in the beginning when you apply for the job because, they, because most companies don't want to take you anyways because they need someone with work experience. And when you have passed that wall, it's going to be easier. I haven't done it myself yet, but I truly believe it's going to be easier. Okay, but now enough said. I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope you had a wonderful weekend. Have a good start in your next week. And we're going to see each other back in the next video. But until then, bye bye.